If you have ever done a musical in a high school gymnasium <laughs> with all of the comforts of the folding chairs and the acoustics of a basketball court, well, damn it, you'll grow up 50 years later and build one of these. <laughs> When I was first uh, uh, notified about this event, of course, I was, I was awed. Um, I knew one thing for sure, I wasn't going to be honored for my uh, scholastic aptitude in this class. <laughs> and so I settled down, and uh, during the next three and a half years, I quickly rose to the rank of second class petty officer and earned, get this, a good conduct medal. I mean, that's not anything like your medal, which I terribly respect, but for me, that was a big deal. My, I think my parents thought I bought it from somebody. <laughs> I think everybody who went to Blair, especially those of us who grew up there, felt part of Blair High School. It's sort of, it was overlooking us like a, a, a mother would look over you. Even though many of us threw up in Sligo Creek Parkway during the first day of football practice, I still like Sligo Creek Park. I am indeed honored to be here this evening. And before I get started, let me just say I was excited to meet Mr. Ben Stein, who I know has um, been quite accomplished in a number of different arenas, um, very bright person, quick-witted. And I went over to introduce myself to him back in the green room. And I said, Mr. Stein, uh, a real pleasure to meet you. My name is James Brown. And he said, excuse me? I said, my name is James Brown. He, and he looked at me and he said, but I thought you died a few years ago. <laughs> so then, and because I had the honor of coaching guys like James, I guess things have been pretty good for me. But, you know, if you have guys like James Brown, you don't miss. And James, I know you cut a lot of ties to be here tonight, and I appreciate it because you'll probably be up in New York right now getting ready for NFL today. But maybe on Sunday when we all tune in on CBS, Maybe you can mention this little affair we had tonight. What do you think? Huh? Yeah. And I can remember one of my grandsons, Nick, was in kindergarten, and the teacher asked them all to write down their favorite sport. And Nick wrote down baseball. And the teacher went over and said, Nick, why did you write down baseball? He said, well, my father is a good baseball player, knows all about it, could teach me to be a great baseball player. She said, I thought that you might write down basketball. He said, oh, no, I don't know anybody that knows anything about basketball. <laughs> True story. She said, well, you know, uh, some people think your grandfather knows a little bit about basketball. He said, oh, no, I go to all his games, and he never gets in. Watching my high school heartthrob and gay Patlin dancing in the girls' gym and the sock ops we used to have after the football games, wondering if I'd ever have anyone that pretty like me. And then I got my wonderful wife. Ah, gay Patlin, eat your heart out. And then I, and then I. Well, before our Blair days began, Carl lived across the street from me on Harvey Road, next door to Ben Stein. As their careers have validated over the years, the Bernstein's house was appropriately, appropriately on the left, and the Steins was on the right. I never expected to graduate from Blair. I was flunking chemistry and never even got to try on a cap and gown when the decision was made by Mr. Shaw and the faculty better to get Bernstein out of the place and let him graduate with his class than have him on the grounds for another year. <laughs> a little sidebar to Coach Puglisi, you know, he also coached history at Blair and, and uh, <laughs> one, year, one year a bunch of us jocks got into his uh, class and uh, he gave an essay test and the papers came back and he scolded us for about 10 minutes about cheating. I know you guys were cheating. We go, how do you know that, coach? He goes, well, I was grading the papers. One paper said, uh, I do not know the answer to this question. The very next paper said, me neither. That's <laughs> <laughs> the truth. That's a true story, by the way. 
There's one other stat that you're not going to find in any record books, but it happened when we were still at Blair. Tommy and I were challenged by four Blazer teammates to play a basketball game. <clears throat> we won that basketball game 106 to 102. And I'm proud to say that for my team, I scored four points. <laughs> I still indicate to Tommy that had it not been for my four points, we might well have lost that game. The only daughter to be born in the United States of that family. She grew up shy, but courteous, dutiful to her parents, a delight to her friends. Just ask anyone who went to Tacoma Park Junior High School with her. And that's the way Connie Chung wants to be remembered. <laughs> this is the Connie Chung I know. The most dogged, aggressive, knock on the door, not the grass, never let a story die reporter I have ever known in this country. Maury. <laughs> You know, he's not bad at talking. He ought to do a talk show. <laughs> um, I, I want you to know that, that Ben Stein, you know when Ben was 16? He looked like he was 40. <laughs> and now that he's over 60, he finally looks his age. And as for, you know, Goldie was saying I was smart or intelligent or something like that. I, she, I wasn't, and she, she was the, uh, uh, I think, the teaching assistant in chemistry for Mr. Adelson or something like that. And, uh, and she would sit there, you know, she was a ballet dancer, so she would sit really tall and pretty. And, um, and I guess she corrected tests or whatever, but I really struggled. And, uh, but I had very good eyesight at that time. And I could see Jimmy Jingle's test paper when he was taking a test, you know? And I cheated off of him the entire year. Jimmy must have been really good in chemistry because I guess I got a good grade and she thought I was smart. Uh-uh. <laughs>